Trust Once Lost, Chapter 34, Part 2 So, aside from the incident at school, what else has she been struggling with? Well, today, she was real anxious about coming here. Why's that? Applejack sighed. There was an incident a couple of days ago. Applejack explained. Green said a bad word in front of Granny, and, well, Granny decided she needed to wash her mouth out with soap. I've made sure it won't happen again. Oh, dear. Diglo gasped. How did Green respond? She didn't seem to mind the soap, said Applejack. What she was terrified of is that you'd find out about it and take her away. How'd she get that idea? Applejack looked downcast. That may have been my fault, too, said Applejack. I think she overheard me telling Granny why she couldn't use any physical punishments with Green. Green wanted to keep it a secret, but I told her she should never keep it a secret if some pona hurts her. <sighs> it's unfortunate that this happened, but you handled the situation appropriately. Diglo praised. It's certainly not enough for me to think she's unsafe in your home. Well, that's a load off my back, said Applejack. I hate to admit, she had me starting to worry. Normally, at this point, I'd ask about her daily routine, but I'm guessing she hasn't had time to settle into one yet. Diglo saw Applejack nod in confirmation. So, any more concerns in general? I don't know where to start. Let's start with a party, said Diglo. Green didn't want to attend? Yeah, she was real anxious about being around so many other ponies, explained Applejack. She seemed to think she had to pretend to be having fun to avoid upsetting Pinky, but I told her she didn't have to go to the party if she didn't want to. How does she know Pinky? Asked Iglo. I'm not sure, replied Applejack. By reputation, I guess. She was really scared of what might happen if Pinky thought she didn't like the party. Well, I think you made the right decision there said Diglo. I'd hoped that her anxiety was specific to her being in the hospital, but it seems like a more general social anxiety. What happened next? Well, I sent my little sister and her two friends up to keep Green company, but when I came back to check on them, I found her out in the hallway talking to Rainbow Dash. And Green was crying. Rainbow Dash the Wonderbolt? Asked Diglo. Applejack nodded. And what was she doing there? That takes a little explaining, said Applejack. Say, Rainbow thanks a Scootaloo as a little sister, <laughs> the Philly Green kicked in the face. Diglo put a fetlock across her muzzle. Please tell me this isn't going where I think it's going. I thought that she'd come to give Green a talking to, and I may have overreacted. Diglo's face became serious. Was there violence involved? What? Applejack exclaimed. No, no, I just yelled at her and kicked her out of my house. That seems like a reasonable response. It's completely inappropriate for Rainbow to discipline a foal who's under your care without your knowledge or consent. Well, it turns out Rainbow was only up there to see if they were alright, and Green ran into her. Applejack explained. And Green was terrified that it was her fault we were fighting. I see. Diglo wrote something on a clipboard. Well, these things happen sometimes. Were you able to console her? Yeah, I gave her a hug and answered her worries as best as I could. Who initiated the hug? Uh, pardon? Did she come to you, or did you go to her? She was hiding behind my foreleg, and she was pressed up against me, so I figured she wanted a hug. Diglo smiled. It sounds like she feels safe with you, even if she was scared by the yelling. So, you used to be a nurse? I looked the therapist in the eye. How could I be a nurse at my age? I asked. In the hospital. You were just pretending? Why don't we pump you full of morphine and see what crazy things you start saying? I deadpanned. What's morphine? Did I just fuck up and say a drug that didn't exist in this world? No, wait, I read that in my patient notes, so it was the same. Is she testing me? Or does she honestly not know? Morphine is a strong painkiller. They gave it to me at the hospital when I broke my foreleg. I explained. Turns out it made me go a bit loopy. There, not too detailed, but enough to show I know what I'm talking about. Painkiller? My anger spiked for a moment. 
Is she really going to quibble about my word choice? Analgesic. I said tersely. The therapist nodded. So you were testing me? Testing you? I groaned in frustration. Can I leave? We can take a break if you like. Green opened up to me this morning, more than she has before. Said Applejack. But the thing she was saying... I think she's still not quite right in the head. What did she say? She said that she wasn't a real filly and that she wanted to pretend that I was real. Said Applejack. She said that she was afraid to tell any pony because they would think she was crazy. That she wasn't sure if she was crazy or not. That's... Said Dayglo. Hmm. That wasn't something I was expecting. Is there something wrong with her brain? Diglo thought for a moment. The way she talks, it's easy to forget her age. It is normal for a child her age to have an imaginary friend or a make-believe world that they pretend is real. Explained Diglo. But this is self-doubt and anxiety over whether ponies will think she's crazy. That's a concern. So what should I do? Reassure her. Instructed Diglo. Don't worry about trying to poke holes in her story. She knows on some level what's real and what isn't. I saw it explosively as I stepped out of the room. Morning Light was still standing right behind me, of course. But she already knew how uncomfortable she was making me, so it was pointless to try and spare her feelings. Blood pounded in my ears. My legs felt taut. I could feel the linoleum under my hooves. Not much traction. I took a breath, held it, and exhaled slowly. Running away won't solve anything, she'll just catch me. Where's Applejack? I asked. She has a meeting with Diglo. Morning replied. They should be finished about the same time we are. When they're done talking, I might never see her again. I looked down the hall and saw a directory, noting the arrow labeled Social Worker pointing to the left. Conveniently, there was also an arrow pointing left, directing ponies to the restrooms. Where are you going? To the bathroom. I snarked. You can stop following me now. That's fine. I just need to know where you are. She replied. No means no. I tried to snark, but the last syllable broke. My head was floating. My legs were jelly. My breaths were sharp. As I turned the corner, I quickly identified Daglo's office through my blurry vision and made a beeline for it. Thankfully, the door was unlocked, and it opened with a lever, not a knob. I had a lot of trouble gripping those. Morning Light spotted me just as I was opening the door. We made eye contact, and she opened her mouth about to say something until she just let out an exasperated sigh. I pushed the door open and saw Applejack. Then I started walking towards her, and mechanically sat down next to her. I couldn't speak. I could hardly breathe or see. Y'all right, sweet pea? I'm... what? I felt tears running down my muzzle as I looked at the floor. No. I felt the warmth of Applejack's body as she wrapped me in a hug. Diglo looked at her colleague in the doorway and raised an eyebrow. I'll give you two a moment. She said before walking out into the hallway. Sorry. Morning Light apologized. She got away from me. Difficult session? I don't think she likes me. <laughs> Running away crying for their mommy is generally a bad sign, yes. I could do without the sarcasm, Glowy. Alright, alright. Diglo placated. Do you think you can help her? Maybe. Morning replied. I think Applejack will need to be in the room with us for her to feel comfortable talking to me, though. At least for a few sessions. Did you hit on something traumatic? Hardly. Morning huffed. The first words out of her mouth were to accuse me of being condescending. And then? Well, she's obviously had therapy before, and she has an excellent memory. Explained Morning. She rattled off the analysis for how her anxiety functions, and then a bunch of philosophical stuff. Philosophy? I'm not sure how much of it she really understands. Based on the wording, it sounds like she's paraphrasing something she read in a book. Said Morning. Cognitively, she seems to be pretty firmly in the concrete operational stage. She's able to think of things from other ponies' perspectives, but when asked hypothetical questions, 
She's certain there's only one answer. So, what led to... Daglo gestured towards her office. This. She was becoming increasingly paranoid that I was testing her, and suggested that we could have a break. She went straight for Applejack. Morning shrugged. At least she's bonding well with her foster mom. Yeah. Diglo winced. Of shame. Morning exclaimed. You're not planning on separating them, are you? Diglo hesitated and glanced around. You know how many official requests for information I normally get from Canterlot? Said Diglo. None. In 17 years, it's never happened. For Green, I've had 10 in less than a week. One of them sends a Pegasus messenger to fly the documents back to Rexley. A courier? Not a courier, a messenger. With a crest of a noble house. You're not saying they would- Of course! I'd never suggest that a noble house would act improperly. Diglo grit her teeth. But they're sending an inspector. And I think we both know how thorough they'll be when they assess the Apple's ability to nurture her magical development. I wonder if the noble she's referring to is in regards to Luna. Or it could just be any other person, who knows. But things are about to get interesting. Anywho, let's get on to our sunny donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Star630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru, Ryan, and Iron Sky. Magic Rock 109, Jock TF, Toxard Raid, and Normal Splock, Moonar, Pastel, Sky, Sauce, and Romans 2, Hexor, Brother, Mordred, Omicron, Light, Ruben, Sat, 952, Will, Chris, Twinky, Ross, Ultra, and Maluigi, Day, Chance, Request, Fix, Smoke, 369, Bob, Gadget, Jeff, Murder, Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and love you to the fullest.